Salvete omnes, welcome to this uh, video lesson on uh, Capitulum Trecesimum Tertium, chapter 33. Uh, titulus Capituli, title of the chapter, Est Exercitus Romanus, Roman Army. Hic in pictura est agmin militum. Here in the picture is a column of soldiers, a marching line or a column. Uh, Ogmen can be a marching line like this that's very long, or it can be a wide uh, line of soldiers lined up on the battlefield. Um, so either the skinny version or the long version, either one. But Ogmen is basically soldiers in a you know, sort of formation. Okay. Exercitus Romanus Universus, the whole Roman army, constat ex legionibus duo de triginta, consists of two from thirty, so thus twenty-eight legions, quae in denas cohortes de wuduntur, which are divided into ten cohorts each. So these are distributive numerals. This is ten each, this would be six each, this is five each, this is four each. Okay, so which are divided into ten cohorts each. So ten cohorts per legion. In singulis legionibus, in the individual legions, sunt sena, vel quina, vel quaterna milia militum. There are six or five or four thousands of soldiers each. That is to say, somewhere between six and four thousand legionary soldiers in a legion. Qui omnes quives Romani sunt, who are all Roman citizens. Praetaria, furthermore, magna auxilia exercitui adjunguntur. Large auxiliary units are added or are joined to the army. So each legion usually had auxiliary units with them, and these could be auxiliary cavalry or uh, maybe um, range fighters, so people that were slingers or bowmen. Auxilia sunt pedites equitesque ex provincies, the auxiliaries or auxiliary units. This word auxilia can also mean aids or helps elsewhere, but in military language it usually means auxiliary units. The auxiliary are foot soldiers, pedites, and cavalry or horse soldiers, equites, from the provinces, qui arma leviora sicut arcus sagitasque ferunt, who carry lighter arms, so this is the comparative, uh, such as bows and arrows. Legionarii sunt pedites, scutis, gladiis, pilisque armati. Legionaries are foot soldiers armed with shields, with swords, and with javelins. Signum legionis, the standard of the legion, or the symbol of the legion, we could also say, est aquila argentea, is a silver eagle. And here we can see aquila on the top of the, um, the standard for the legion. Quae in itinere ante agmen fertur, uh, the silver eagle which, quae, is carried, um, in front of the column, in front of the um, group of soldiers, in itinere, on the march, on their, their journey. In itinere, on the march, cohortes alea post aleam in longo orne pregrediuntur. The cohorts progress or advance, that is to say go forward, one of them after another one, in a long uh, we'd say maybe line or rank or file or something like that. Tales ordo, such a line, militum progredientium, of soldiers going forward, dicitur agmen, is called an agmen. So again here we could call it a marching column in English. Cum agmen ad hostes pervenit, when the column arrives at the enemy or comes to the enemy, si tempus et locus idoneus est ad pugnandum, if the time and the place is suitable, idoneus, for fighting, notice the gerund construction here, 
cohortes in tres ordenes instruuntur. The cohorts are in, are drawn up into three um, ranks or three lines. Exercitus ita instructus acies appellatur. An army so drawn up is called an acies. Uh, now we might call this a battle line. Okay, so when the augment is drawn out into a long, um, you know, sort of wide line, the term for that in Latin is acies. Ante proelium, before the battle. Uh, proelium is a synonym for pugna, as you see out in the margin. Before the battle, dux exercitus, the leader of the army, or you could say the general of the army, milite suos hortator, encourages or exhorts his own soldiers, milite suos, ut fortiter pugnant, that they should fight bravely. Notice the present subjunctive in this um, clause of indirect command. These kind of clauses will start with an ut, or if it's negative, it'd start with ne in e, and then you have a subjunctive verb as here. Tum pedites, then the foot soldiers, procurunt, run forward, et primum pila in hostes metunt, and first they throw their javelins at the enemies, dende eos gladiis caedunt, then they cut them down, meaning the enemy, with their swords. Hostibus crolii victis, ablative absolute, with the enemies, conquered in battle, that is to say after they are conquered in battle, but it's literally with the enemies conquered in battle. Dux a militibus imperator salutator. The general is greeted as imperator by the soldiers. Vesperi, in the evening, exercitus loco a defendendum idoneo castra ponit. The army places a camp at a place suitable for defending. There's another gerund phrase. Quae valo et fossa circumdanter. A camp which is surrounded, circumdanter, by a wall or rampart and a ditch. Ita muniuntur castra romana. So Roman camps are fortified. Aemilius frater Aemiliae minor. Aemilius, the younger brother of Aemilia, so apparently Aemilia is older than him. Quim supra commemoravimus, whom we mentioned above, a prima aetate studiosus fuit, was eager from his first age, that is from the, his early years, for military service, rei militaris. Jam puer, Septimanus natus, already having been, as a boy, having been born for seven years, and we would say uh, already as a boy of seven years or already as a seven-year-old boy, but it literally is having been born for seven years. Gladios ligneos et arcus sagitasque sibi faciebat. He used to make or was making wooden swords and bows, arcus, and arrows, sagitas, for himself. Ut cum aleis poris eius de maitatis proelia luderit, in order that he might play, this is a purpose clause, ut, with the subjunctive verb, with other boys of the same age, uh, in order that he may play battles. Septim decimanos natus, Having been born for 17 years, in other words, when he was 17 years old, a patre interrogatus, asked by his father, quid tum discre velet, what he wanted to do, or to learn then, discre, to learn. Filius statim responded, the son immediately answered, se nihil nisse rem militarem discre velet, that he wanted to learn Nothing except for the military stuff. All right. Voluntas filii, the will of the son, patri haud placebat, did not at all please the father. Okay, that's not what his dad wanted to hear. 
cum ipse literi studeret, um, since he himself uh, studied or was eager uh, uh, for literature, for letters, neque ulum aliud studium filio suo dignum esse arbitrator, nor did he think, arbitrator, that any other study, any other interest, we could also say, was worthy of his son, filio suo. Cumero, but when? Filius nullo modo contra voluntatem ad studium literarem cogi posset, when his son in no way could be compelled against his will to the study of literature. Pater eum, una cum publio valereo adolescente eustim aetatis, in Germaniam ad exercitum Romanum misit. Um, his father sent him, along with Publius Valerius, a young man of the same age, into Germany to the Roman army. Okay, so he arranged for him to go with a friend, so there would at least be somebody to look out for him. Ut apu ducim quindam agregiam stipendia mererit, in order that he should earn his pay. Right, stipendia is sort of the pay that you get for doing work, in order that he should earn his pay. Um, and it also has to do with sort of the the honors that you earn in serving in the military as well. With a certain quindam outstanding general. Ibi Aemilius, they are Aemilius, pro patria pugnans, fighting for his country. Yam magnam gloriam militarem sibi quaesivit, has already um, sought out great military glory for himself. Virtus eius egregia, his um, outstanding virtue, or we could also say courage for virtus, ab omnibus laudatur, is praised by all. Okay, so Aemilius has gotten a good reputation from his fellow soldiers. Et pater, et soror Aemilii, both the father and the sister of Aemilius, frequentes epistulas ad filium et fratrum suum metunt, send frequent letters to their son and uh, brother. Pater maxime de rebus publici scribit, the father writes mostly or especially about public affairs, sed Amelia de rebus privatis, but Amelia about private affairs, private matters. Ut de libri suis et de conviviis scribere solet. Uh, and if I put all of this together now, but Emilia is accustomed to write about private matters as about her children and about parties. Uh, convivium is a dinner party, right? We had a chapter of that recently. Epistulae quas Emilius ad patrem dat, the letters which Emilius gives um, to his father. Praecipue de gloria et virtute militari sunt, are especially about glory and military virtue or courage, said ex iis literis privatis, but from those private letters, quas Aemilia, which Aemilia, nuper a fratre sua ocapit, received recently from her brother, plane aparet, it's plainly apparent, clearly apparent, eum yam vita militari fatigatum esse, that he already, or now, has been tired out of military life. Ecce literae novissimae, look, the most recent letter. And notice literae in the plural can be a singular letter that is the equivalent of a pistula. Quas Aemilia pro, uh, pridie calindas unias a fratre acepit, which Aemilia received um, the day before the calends of June, 
so that would be um, the last day of May, from her brother. Et postero die, and on the following day, in conviwio recitavit, she read out loud at the party. So I think this is the dinner party that they had. And that brings us to the end of section one. So we will have to continue with reading the letter from her brother and find out how exactly he was feeling being tired of the military life and maybe why he was feeling that way as well. Walete omnes.